during part of the series we developed this model. Now in light of this model the first step is obviously conceptualization. Now before you actually get down to how to measure a particular construct that is let's say servant leadership, green identity, green empowerment or all the other constructs in the study. The first step is to identify how are you going to conceptualize these variables here. The problem or sometimes the issue is that normally early career researchers are too much focused on measurement of the constructs and they forget that conceptualization is actually an important step before you actually move to measurement. If you get a scale and that is let's say it is a multi-dimensional scale but actually the conceptualization is not linked to the scale that you have selected. The problem is that when you do not understand the conceptualization it is highly likely that your measurement will be flawed. There will be errors in your measurement. Your measurement will not complement or will not be in line with your conceptualization. You might have conceptualized the construct differently and you are measuring it differently. And then once you collect the data there is no turning back. So it is always very important that you first conceptualize to identify the definition of the concept before you actually try to measure it. Moving on. Conceptualization. Now conceptualization is the process by which constructs, the concepts that we have identified in the last slide, are defined in concrete and precise terms. So the objective of conceptualization is to define the concepts that actually make up your study. Next, for instance, if someone says bad things about other racial groups, is that racial prejudice if woman earns less than men for the same job? Is that gender prejudice? Are there different kinds of prejudice? And if so, what are they? Now, are there different levels of prejudice? such as high or low? Answering all these questions are the key to measuring the prejudice construct correctly. The process of understanding what is included and what is excluded in the concept of prejudice is the conceptualization process. So what you're doing is you're trying to make sense out of what actually a particular construct means. You are identifying the boundaries of the construct in a particular study. You are identifying what is included and what is excluded, just like the one we have identified here. Prejudice. If you obviously say bad things about other racial groups, is it prejudice? If women earn less than men for the same job, is that prejudice? Are there different kinds of prejudice? And are there different levels of prejudice? So all these things that may be included or excluded for a concept, this is called conceptualization. The conceptualization process is all more important because of the imprecision, vagueness and ambiguity of many social sciences constructs. Now obviously in social sciences sometimes what happens is constructs overlap. The definitions are not yet clear. They are in developing stage or the conceptualization is yet to be cleared. So that's the reason you first need to identify what are the boundaries of your construct. How are you going to conceptualize the construct? Now, for example, compassion and empathy may seem similar or they may seem similar to sentimentality. If you have a proposition that compassion is positively related to empathy, now you are considering both of them as separate constructs. You are considering them differently. So before you actually test your hypothesis, obviously you will need data for it and before that data collection or measurement, you need to conceptualize it and identify how are they different from each other. While defining constructs such as prejudice or compassion, we must understand that sometimes these constructs are not real or can exist independently, but they are simply imaginary creations in our mind. For example, there might be a construct that does not exist in reality. It is simply 
imaginary. For instance, there are certain tribes in the world who lack prejudice and who cannot even imagine what the concept entails. But in real life, we tend to treat this as a real concept. Now, for example, there might be a particular concept that is not applicable to a particular organization. So you cannot just force that concept into that organization. If you are conceptualizing a particular concept in a particular study setting, make sure you define the boundaries and you how do you think that it should be conceptualized. The process of regarding mental constructs as real is called reification, which is central to defining constructs and identifying measurable variables for measuring them. One important decision in conceptualizing the construct is specifying whether they are unidimensional or multidimensional. Now, again, this is a very important concept. Unidimensional constructs are those that are expected to have a single underlying dimension. These constructs can be measured using a single measure or test. Now, what are they? Examples include simple constructs like people's weight. You measure it normally in kilograms, wind speed, probably even complex constructs like self-esteem. Now these complex constructs here, which is measured through set of items, let's say self-esteem is measured using SE1, SE2, SE3, SE4. Now they are normally reflective. At first order or at, at the lower level, they are normally reflective. Or for example, you might have heard about, let's say, organizational commitment. So organizational commitment measured using four items, let's say OC1, 2, 3, and 4. Now these four items are measuring organizational commitment. Now in this case, they are, or they normally tend to be reflective, that is interchangeable. If Even if you delete one, your construct does not lose its content validity. Moving on, multidimensional constructs. Now they consist of two or more underlying dimensions. Let's say CSR. Now CSR is measured using, let's say, economic dimension, legal dimension, ethical dimension, and then you've got philanthropic dimension. And each of this dimension is then measured using different items. Now these items here are measuring these constructs. And these items here are reflective. At higher level, they may be formative. So this is a higher order construct that is measured through these sub dimensions and each of these sub dimensions have got its own items or their own items. For example, another example, if you conceptualize a person's academic aptitude as considering two dimensions, mathematical and verbal, then the academic aptitude is multidimensional construct because it is based on or it consists of two dimensions, mathematical and verbal, just as we did with CSR. Now, each of these constructs must be measured separately, obviously, mathematical measure measured separately, verbal measure separately, and then we can combine them. And that combination, obviously, in, in PLSSCM, if you are doing or we are doing CBSCM, we do higher order analysis or hierarchical component model modeling or second order factor analysis. So we can do different analysis in order to assess these construct at higher level. This is a very good read to learn research methods for social sciences. The book is freely available. The link will be shared in the description. Thank you very much.